for the past 18 years, I have been involved uh, very closely with digestive disorders and helping people to manage symptoms of Crohn's disease, colitis, and all other types of digestive problems. The thing that I found to be the most successful was giving my patients probiotics. And so as a result of this, I explored which probiotics I found to give me the best results and looked at supportive supplements that would help to give a more grounded, rounded approach to treatment. Over this period of time, I was under the impression that probiotics worked in a certain way. And it's only recently since I learned all the information that's come out of the Human Microbiome Project, which started in 2008 and went on till 2013, and actually they're starting with their second chapter now. Um, this in actual fact was the first time that it wasn't about conjecture, but more about scientific information and fact that we actually know more about what happens in the digestive system and actually how probiotics really help. The Microbiome Project was a project to go one step for further beyond the study of the genome, which they had done. So now it was a question of looking at what is it that's in the digestive system that's natural and helpful to people as their natural bacteria. That's what the microbiome is. It's the natural bacteria that exists in our body. So the first thing that we found out is that it's not only in the digestive tract because these bacteria exist everywhere in our bodies and on our bodies, on our skin, it's in our mouths, it's everywhere and it's not limited to the gut. So this was revolutionary. We never knew that before. And we never knew how many there were because here are these zillions of strains and they outnumber the number of cells that we have in our body. And then the second most important thing with regard to this was to understand that the importance of a strong microbiome has to do with diversity. In other words, the people that they, they studied in different parts of the world, even in very um, remote places, their microbiomes had diverse strains, and that was what was making them healthy. Not because they had an abundant number of lactobacillus and bifidus, which is the way that we were going, always knowing that they were the most prevalent, and thinking that by supplementing those, that was the way we were going to help with the strength of the microbiome. Not so. And also we discovered that the number, the, the, the quality, the um, diversity that you have of your natural microbiome you get from your mom when you're going through the birth canal, also during nursing, and literally in the first two years of life is the time that you actually gather all the good bacteria that you're ever going to have. So how is this possible? Here it was that we were thinking that when we're taking probiotics, we're stimulating our uh, bodies in a way that we're adding good bacteria to the body. And this is not really so. The way it is that we're strengthening it is by crowding out with those strains that create greater diversity and we also didn't pay attention to the fact that the only way that probiotics can really be helpful is if they're recognized by the human body. So they have to be human strain. Well, when we take probiotics that are grown on dairy or on soy or other substrates, the body doesn't recognize them. So it's an illusion to think that they are multiplying because they're not. 
they're not actually multiplying because they're not recognized by the human body. And these are the types of information that we gathered from the Human Microbiome Project. Well, perfect pass probiotic is different because the first thing is that it's made from three different strains of bacillus. The bacillus strains are actually ones that have been used in Europe for a long period of time now, which we haven't done in the United States. Well, these bacillus strains actually are encased in their own endospore. And because of that, they will go through the stomach acid 100% of the time because they're actually protected in this endospore, which only opens once it actually gets down into the digestive tract. Secondly, the bacillus strains that are in this particular formula are in excess of the number that we usually have in our body. So in actual fact, we are taking something that is greater in number than the amount that we have. We know that it's going to be getting through the stomach acid 100% of the time. We know that it's human strain. We know that it exists in nature. So it qualifies, according to these research projects, 100% of this is a probiotic that can be effective. And so in actual fact, the most important part is that it's increasing diversity and it's allowing the body to be able to get rid of the bad bacteria because that's the way we can strengthen the gut. Not by feeding them with new huge amounts of lactobacillus and bifidus. In actual fact, there are so many trillion strains of lactobacillus and bifidus, we couldn't take enough for it to be more than what we have already.